We're speaking with Dr. Alan Epstein at Pratt & Whitney Media Day. Uh, Dr. Epstein, what I'd like to hear about is the GTF or the Pure Power engine going on the C-Series. We've been hearing good things about the engine from Bombardier. And of course, we are living in a world where delays are normal. Um, and parts, and, and that includes engines, go out on sort of first flight but are not quite at specification. Yet there seems to be a growing confidence in the pure power engine being at spec, so to speak, at first flight for the C-Series. Could you share a little bit with us about that? Okay. Uh, I expect that when the engine enters service at the end of next year, uh, it will be in spec. And I don't expect the airplane to deliver what Bombardier has promised. The reason that it will be in spec, which hasn't been the, the norm in recent years, is basically two reasons. One is, uh, unlike any engine I've seen in the last three decades, the company invested significant amounts of money, almost a billion dollars, before starting the engine project. And this is unheard of. Once you start an engine project, you expect to spend a billion dollars. But to do so, to get ready for one, people have never done before. And in fact, I've been at engineering meetings where a gentleman in, in charge of one of the, the parts of the engine said, I'm really worried. We haven't had any problems. And, you know, and every other engine I've worked on, a, by this time in a program, with the engine so mature, we would have had several problems. We don't have any yet. And his boss said, think back five years. Think back five years ago before we started this and we were working on the technology preparation. Did you have problems then? Oh, yeah. And so what's really going on is one reason why the engine's going to meet the performance promises is we worked it all out beforehand. And you just don't do that. The rule in, in jet engine manufacture before is you don't spend much money until you launch the program. And then to stay on schedule, you're willing to spend any amount of money, which is good for engineers. But then you find out the program only wants to spend large amounts of money for a very short time, so it doesn't add up to much, to get the problem solved. This is just doing business a new way. It's not just the technology that's new. It's the way we run the program, manage the money, laid out the risks are new. So that's, that's one reason. Second reason, I think, is that the change in the architecture to go to a gear gave you such an enormous performance benefit that for the first application, the, uh, the Bombardier engine, we weren't pressed hard to make performance that we weren't confident we could make. And so if you look at some recent airplanes where all the engines failed to meet spec, that wasn't a surprise to anybody in the engine airplane business because the spec was very, very challenging for the technology they had. We, for the GTF, had uh, a step up on technology it was so good that people didn't believe it. So there was no motivation to add another two or three or four percent to make it better. Uh, and it's a very conservative, conservative design. It's conservative, uh, one is because Bombardier, MRJ, are new entrants in, in the, where these airplanes are, and they wanted uh, a short performance they wanted assured dates, and that was more important than a percent or two in performance because their airplanes are so much better than the competition. So when you say that there were other programs where they were pushed hard for that sort of performance, what, which programs would you... Um... Well, we're not even on some of them, so it wouldn't be in my... Go, go read your, your magazine and find out which airplanes are in service where the engines aren't even meeting the initial guarantees and it's years later. Some make them, some don't. It's part of the business management of how big is the technical risk and how much is it worth to the program. So th the other reason why the engines are conservative is 
We have some innovations in it. The, the, the uh, main fan drive gear system is one. The variable area nozzle and the C-series is another. And for the variable area nozzle, it's the first one ever put into commercial service other than the Concorde, which was a strange and, and elderly beast by this time. And so what we wanted to be able to do is convince the airframe community, the airlines, and the regulators that this stuff is safe and reliable. So it's really conservatively designed. And when people looked at the engineering details, they agreed. And conservatively designed means not many surprises in development. Now, uh, Bob Saya said, uh, I, uh, as I think you were going through the airplane publicly, that he looks at the gears and the gears look like they're going to last forever. So he thinks the engineers are sandbagging him and that we could take some weight out of the gears, for example. Well, Bob's a sharp guy and maybe Bob is right, but he's not telling us he's upset because the gear is right on spec and looks like it'll last almost forever. We're really happy about that. So we're reaping two benefits, the benefits of being an innovator and the benefits of being prepared before we started the innovation. So that's why it's coming out so well. If one looks at the RFI for the 777, then the 777X, yeah. and the fact that Brett has been invited back onto that uh, to, to have a look at the program, do you anticipate investing on, uh, let's say, another billion dollars on a wide-body engine using the same architecture before anything else happens? Uh, in some sense, I'm the wrong person to ask because you're asking about money. And all I do is take money from my betters at the company and spend it on engineering. Do you think that you could get a billion dollars to develop a wide-body engine before there's a wide-body program for, your, for, for the company? Ah, uh, we don't need it. Right. Because we have the gear technology and we have the variable area nozzle technology if we need it. Um, and Airframer has been coming to us and said, well, will you do studies with us on applying the GTF technology for wide bodies? So we're doing so. But we're engineers, so we have to see what the results of the studies are. And is the GTF, how much better than the legacy approach is the GTF on wide bodies? We'll see. And then whether we invest money or not is what we think the, the business case is for go, going forward. But we don't need different gear technology for the wide bodies. What we have will work perfectly well. Uh, and then the question is, for, again, for the wide bodies, how much is the airframer demanding in terms of technology? And is that real, a realistic business risk? So we're just starting the studies. I don't have the answers. When you say just starting the studies, are they months old, weeks old? Uh, when did Boeing announce the, the Boeing announced maybe a month or two months ago that right. the studies were starting, and the studies have just started since then and now. Right. Anything with Airbus that that one might look at? We're continuously stud. We spend millions of dollars a year with Airbus, with Boeing, Embraer, Marodier, all the manufacturers, literally millions of dollars a year, studying things. And, and a manufacturer will come and say, oh, our next airplane is going to be this wide body with this range. You've got to study it with us. And so we study it with them two months, six months, eight months. We give them a candidate engine. They say it won't fit. We modify the engine. They say it won't fit. We say modify the airplane. They say we want more performance. Then they, we give them more performance. They say, no, we don't believe it. This goes back and forth constantly. And then one day you get a call as well, we're not studying that airplane anymore. We've decided to study an narrow body now. And our advanced concepts people switch to narrow bodies. We don't know what until we get really get an RFP not for study, uh, but for an engine, we don't know what Boeing, Airbus, Embraer, or Wardier are planning to do. So a study like this takes typically six months? It depends upon how much detail they want to go to. 
we can do a two month study, a six month study, a year study. And generally as as there's more interest in the company, the studies um, get hotter. Mm -hmm. I'd also distinguish between a study for re-engineering, which where the airframer doesn't plan on making many changes to the airplane, and a study for an all new airplane, where nothing is locked down by the airframer. They're just trying to see what the parameters are. If they're willing to put bigger landing gear, and we put a bigger engine on, how much can they gain? And then they internally trade things off. So it's a, uh, and we do it for open rotors, we do it for little airplanes, we do it for big airplanes. Uh, I was surprised when I started doing this here how much we actually spend on these studies every single uh, year. Thank you.